Osio. Welcome back to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Caitlin. If your language learning experience has been anything like mine, then you've put a lot of thought into the languages that you're learning. Reading textbooks, memorizing vocab lists, listening to song lyrics over and over and over again. But can you learn a language without paying attention, trying, or even knowing that you're learning? In this video, we're going to talk about implicit and explicit learning, the continuum they exist on, and why striking a balance between the two might be the key to language learning success. So what exactly do we mean by implicit and explicit learning? Implicit learning is unconscious learning or learning without awareness. When you learn implicitly, you don't know that you're learning and you usually do so incidentally that is in the process of trying to learn or do something else. So for example, if you decided to binge watch the first few seasons of Friends, you might incidentally develop a keen sense of 90s fashion. Explicit learning, on the other hand, is conscious learning or learning with awareness. Explicit learning is associated with the intention to learn. So if you decided to watch the Great British Baking Show because you really wanted to perfect your Swiss meringue, that would be more of an explicit learning situation. Even more explicit would be taking a baking class. Of course, in reality, it's not that simple and implicit and explicit learning conditions really exist on a continuum. Let's talk about how implicit and explicit learning work in the wild. Babies and young children are usually thought to have a more implicit incidental approach to language learning. They go about their business being babies and they learn to communicate partly out of necessity and partly out of this innate human desire to communicate with their caregivers. When it comes to second language learning, immersive situations are pretty much as implicit as you can get. Let's take a look at Alma, who's studying abroad in France. She's taking some French classes while she's there, but much of her learning is happening incidentally in the course of doing other things like getting to know the city, making new friends, and going about her daily life. When she goes to the post office, she's more concerned with mailing a package than conjugating verbs. And while her bus driver may ask her to repeat things, giving her a clue that she might need to make some corrections, he's probably not giving her explicit feedback on her mistakes. This all describes Alma's learning context, but is it purely implicit? Let's think about this for a minute. First of all, Alma is a young adult who's perfectly aware of the fact that she's living in another country, partly for the purpose of learning French. So while much of her learning may happen incidentally, a good amount is probably also intentional. Before going to the post office, she might think about how to formulate a question to request first class postage. Should I say première? No, it's prioritaire. Maybe she'd even practice it a few times. When she's chatting with friends and learns a fun new expression from context, she might make a mental note to write it down later so she doesn't forget. And while her interactions are focused on meaning, there's a good chance that Alma notices the gap between her utterances and those of native speakers. And yet once back home, Alma speaks with more fluency and accuracy than her friends who haven't studied abroad, and she can't quite explain how she does it. When it comes to implicit and explicit learning, it's easy to confuse the context, the process, and the resulting knowledge, but these are actually all distinct things. In Alma's case, her learning context is relatively implicit. She's not exposed to a lot of instruction or feedback, but she's learning both implicitly and explicitly. Sometimes she's aware of what she's learning or even the fact that she's learning, and sometimes she's not. And when it comes to knowledge, there are some aspects of French grammar that Alma can verbally explain and others that just feel right, even though she can't quite say why. In other words, an implicit learning context does not necessarily lead to implicit learning, which in turn does not necessarily result in implicit knowledge. The takeaway, when it comes to learning a language, don't expect to use an implicit only approach. Language learning is much more nuanced than that. Now let's consider a classroom learner, Parker. Before class, Parker has to read a chapter in his textbook and finish a few fill in the blank exercises. He also has to study for that vocab quiz on Friday. In class, Parker's teacher gives a brief grammar explanation before asking the students to pair up and work in groups. She tries to guide students toward finding and correcting their own mistakes, but she'll also provide explicit feedback, drawing learners' attention to language forms. For example, she might say something like, 
Well, remember, it's le problème, not la problème. Problème is a masculine noun in French. Parker takes notes and is focused on grammatical form. This is a much more explicit learning context. Parker definitely pays attention and is very much aware that he's learning. And he even knows what he should be focusing on in a given lesson. But just as Alma's learning context doesn't guarantee implicit learning and knowledge, Parker's context doesn't guarantee explicit learning and knowledge. While Parker is paying attention to things like using the correct grammar and word order, he may be learning some other things about French without even realizing it. John Williams, the linguist, not the composer, tested out this theory using a semi-artificial language. He taught learners that the made-up articles gi and ro meant near, and ul and ne meant far. And then he asked them to listen to a bunch of sentences and indicate which meaning they heard. But here's the catch. While the learners were focused on learning near and far, there was a hidden rule. Gi and ul referred to living things, and ro and ne referred to non-living things. Most participants never became aware of this animacy rule, but they still learned it. A caveat here. There's always a caveat. While the Williams study, among others, suggests that it is possible to learn language implicitly, it's very difficult to measure awareness, let alone the absence of it. And so the question of whether awareness is required for language learning remains contentious. Regardless, the vast amount of research on implicit and explicit language learning has revealed a few important things. First, Learners can develop both implicit and explicit knowledge about language in pretty much any learning condition. Second, even the most implicit learning conditions often result in learning, even when learners have little to no awareness of what they're learning. Third, more explicit learning conditions tend to result in more explicit knowledge and faster learning overall. In fact, even though the unaware learners in the Williams study did learn the animacy rule, Learners who became aware of the rule performed much better when tested on this. And this finding represents a pretty general trend. While implicit learning is really important for automatic, fluent language use, conditions that promote explicit learning tend to be more effective. This means that getting instructions and guidance, like taking a language class or reading a grammar blog, can really give you a boost. Studies that include newer techniques like eye tracking or brain measurements have provided a more nuanced picture of the nature of implicit and explicit learning. In a study by Kara Morgan Short and colleagues, learners were trained on a new language either implicitly or explicitly. And both groups performed similarly, eventually reaching high proficiency. But check this out. At high proficiency, only the implicitly trained learners showed native-like brain activity in their second language. But then when the learners were tested again several months later, both groups maintained high levels of performance and both groups processed the second language more like native speakers. So what does this mean? It means that while the learning paths might be different, outcomes for implicit versus explicit learning conditions may be similar given enough input and time. So if you're teaching or learning a second language, should you prioritize implicit or explicit learning opportunities? Well, as mentioned earlier, most learning conditions involve some combination of implicit and explicit learning, and this is a good thing. Explicit learning conditions help learners focus their attention on important or challenging aspects of language and give them opportunities to fix their mistakes and practice saying things correctly. Implicit learning conditions, on the other hand, drive learners to focus on meaning and develop intuitions to use the language more naturally. P.S. If you're a language teacher, check out the video we've linked here for four activities that can help you help your students build their own language intuitions. Some of the most effective language learning strategies involve both implicit and explicit learning tools. At Mango, for example, we explicitly teach vocabulary through translations, but we guide learners toward building an intuitive understanding of grammar. But when tricky grammatical concepts need a bit more attention, we also incorporate explicit explanations to help accelerate learning and avoid confusion. Well, there you have it. To recap, first, we've defined implicit and explicit learning as learning without and with awareness, respectively. There's a difference between learning context, process, and knowledge. 
Implicit learning conditions don't necessarily lead to implicit learning, which doesn't necessarily lead to implicit knowledge. Same goes for explicit learning conditions. And finally, implicit learning is important for developing automatic, fluent language skills and developing intuitions, but explicit learning often results in faster learning. Ultimately, it's good to have a balance of both when it comes to language learning. If you liked this video and you wanna stay tuned for more videos about the science behind language learning, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If there's a topic that you wanna learn more about, tell us about it in the comments. Be sure to check out the description for this video for some free materials on implicit and explicit language learning, including some more information about how Mango uses both types of learning in our courses. Kohia dona dago hai. Thanks for listening. Bye.